Nice to see all of you here. Okay, today I'm going to spend a few minutes um, talking about the daily interactions we have. We meet customers on a daily basis, small, medium, startups, large, very large customers. And we sometimes undertake joint visits with Magento. So next few minutes, we are going to think of um, trends that we are seeing in the market, what we call the B2B2C. It's not uh, B2B and B2C, but a new trend that is B2B2C. So let me start by showing this. Okay, if you look at this slide, you, it represents commerce, you know, all different um, you know, delivery models in the market uh, can be seen here, uh, you know, right from international size online marketplaces. But what we mean by uh, B2B2C trends is how the large big companies that fully relied on distributor networks previously now are directly competing in the consumer space. So they were only operating like large manufacturers, was only, they were only in their B2B space. They left it for the B2B, B2C players to conduct the commerce. But now the big B2B companies, the manufacturers are directly coming into the B2B space and they're trying to disrupt the market. So this is kind of the essence of what um, I'm going to be talking about. If you look in this whole slide, actually you will see only one B to B to C uh, company in a true sense. Um, um, uh, uh, I will leave it for next, and that would be someone like um, you know, Rakuten uh, on those kinds who are really B to B. Most of the others are mostly in the B to C space. So, what what is exactly happening? We see the see the diagram on the top. The B to B players are actually jumping on and trying to consume the B2C space. So there's a lot of um, disruption happening. This was started by Alibaba in 2013 because they were very close to manufacturers in China. They were able to um, you know, spearhead and uh, start this kind of model. Amazon continues to be in, in the B2C space. They, they have a Amazon wholesale, but they are not there yet. Now, one big reason uh, B2B players are able to meet to B2C space is the governance regulations in many countries are opening up, or rather they are being forced to open up. The governments are having to you know, um, uh, unshackle some legal uh, and uh, other government restrictions. And two is uh, obviously the technology offerings. Today, most of these complex models we have, uh, you know, Magento, we were talking about Salesforce and some other companies that provide technology offerings. So that is not a problem anymore. Three is, yes, manufacturers now, instead of selling through online marketplaces or other distribution channels, want direct access to the customers. And obviously, there are many major benefits. If I'm a major manufacturer going directly to the customers, there are benefits, higher margins, lower costs. But most important they want is brand loyalty. They want to be able to be close to the customer, retain them and have a, a direct connect. Now this is where there's a conflict coming with their distribution channels or their sales channels. You had a established set of wholesalers and resellers carrying your products till today, last 30, 40 years. Suddenly now I'm going direct to the customer and this is unsettling the whole industry. So when we meet these customers on a day-to-day -day basis, especially the large, companies these days, this is the big challenge that they are facing, how to you know, kind of create an equilibrium between online shopping and uh, their existing uh, distributor and sales channels. So this is um, <clears throat> one big trend that you are seeing. And as uh, this diagram um, represents from uh, For Forrester Research, this was the old model. You had a very uh, streamlined way of selling you know, create a distributor channel, support them, and then gain loyalty. But now if you look at that slide, there are so many different ways in which um, a manufacturer, you know, inbound or outbound, if you look at it, there are so many different uh, players and interactions in the market. So this is what is, um, you know, uh, how. And just to let you know, uh, B2B, sorry, B2B to C actually represents 85% of the commerce uh, industry space. 
So where B2C was operating till today, basically, you know, it's just, just one end of the segment. Uh, until now, these big companies are now slowly, um, you know, they have started, and then um, in the next few years, they will be actually um, ruling the commerce world. Uh, you know, the direct manufacturers will be ruling the world. This slide gives you some um, feel of uh, along the same axis, along the same parameter, how a B2B customer is different from a B2C customer. I'm not going to go point by point, but you would see if you just take one item, let's say this one, need to see if item S in the stock is what a B2C customer is, but a B2B customer would want to know to see where item is in stock. So, both these are different worlds. Um, B2B is obviously more mature. They, they carry a big uh, business legacy with them. So obviously, you know, their models are more robust, whereas B2C is more in a slick world. You know, they have come off late uh, in a more uh, trendy kind of a world. So there is a big difference here. So again here, uh, the challenge is that B2B are eating into B2C space and they're trying to uh, manage all the challenges that come with it. Next is, what is B2B to C? So you have these manufacturers. For example, let's take Lazada. Just imagine what products they carry. Basically, they are made by some manufacturer or many manufacturers. Now imagine the challenge when all these manufacturers decide to go direct into the market. Now th these are some of the B2C challenges companies will begin to face very soon because there's big uh, food, Fashion, no, they will all want a d direct uh, channel into market in, in different ways. Now, who are the uh, B2B manufacturers? So they have certain set of characteristics. Then you have the B2B distributors. You mean they are the ones who really carried their products till today. You know, the retailers, wholesalers, the you know, sometimes the brick and mortar shops. Uh, we ourselves are a distributor of Magento, um, uh, you know, platform. So we are a distributor. And uh, you know, someday Magento may go direct. Uh, so uh, these are some of the challenges everyone is facing. And if just a typical profile of a B2B buyer is that they are looking to gain um, operational efficiencies without going into other parameters. So the what a B2C buyer is looking for, maybe you want a cheap product. You know, we all when we shop, we want a cheap product. You know, the best product at cheap cost. Whereas a B2B buyer is looking from a different angle because these are all big, large companies, um, you know, operating in a different uh, uh, model. Now, this is what is happening. You know, you have this B2C guys trying to, you know, uh, keep their, uh, you know, share or keep their, uh, you know, um, steps. But then you see B2B coming and trying to uh, transgress into the space. And this is going to, as we said, this is going to continue as we move forward. And again, all the big customers we are seeing today are, we are seeing more of the large volume e-commerce all happening in this space, the, how the big large companies are uh, transgressing into the B2C space. Now I'm just, uh, these are uh, a few, um, Customer slides um, that um, you know I've got uh, courtesy of Magento. How these B B two B players, you know, um, while going into C space, are seeing some tremendous results. Now, in doing so, what they have got right is basically the strategy of how to move, you know, consolidate their uh, entire ecosystem. You know, a company like Carrier Enterprises who are in the HVAC air conditioning space. Uh, look at the kind of results they are getting. But in doing so, they have got certain um, what you call implementation or uh, their strategic insights right. So I'm not going to go into detail here, but it's just to show how uh, manufacturers or companies like, for example, in this case, carrier in going direct to the consumer by getting their strategies right and implementation, uh, platform uh, deployment, are seeing some um, tremendous tax. Just, just to give you an insight of how some customers are getting their um, uh, strategies right. This is an example of a pharmaceutical distributor and retailer. They are actually a distributor themselves, but how they are going into the ma ma market in a different way and seeing you know, some increase in their performances. 
because likewise the equipment manufacturer, these are all heavy duty asset companies that fully relied on distributor networks previously. Now, they, with the modern e-commerce uh, platforms, B2B to C platforms, they are you know, able to go with fast launchers you know, in different countries. Um, and again, you know, the kind of SKUs they carry are tremendous because of sheer number of spare parts that they carry. They're all huge companies, huge assets. And again, they're all now going direct into the market, so they're seeing some tremendous um, attraction. And then the last such example would be a, you know, a flooring manufacturer again. Just to give you an example of how um, you know, the, the trends are changing, how they're seeing some massive, uh, um, what you call, uh, momentum and increase in their margins and profits. But then, yes, this whole you know, game can be very challenging to implement because you're in the B2B, you're a very large company. You have huge, uh, you know, back-end legacy system. So there are challenges to be overcome. Again, we are not going to go into detail here. Yeah. So one of the uh, major challenge um, the companies are facing when uh, large companies are facing when they go into direct interaction with customers is, is called what we call omni-channel conflict management. So customers are band brand-centric. So I, as a consumer, will buy a brand, whether I buy online or I go to a physical store to buy, I will buy the product. So as a manufacturer now, I know that my brand is good enough, a consumer is going to buy. Now my challenge is how do I manage the expectation of a consumer on the left-hand side and my distributors on the right-hand side. So now I have to create an equilibrium. So keep all parties happy. This is omni-channel, keep all parties happy. So in doing so, I have to ensure that my strategy as, as a large manufacturer, you know, the customer experience, the digital market, marketing or the marketplace strategies, you know, all again in equilibrium. For example, uh, large manufacturers now are giving uh, equal kind of promotions for online selling, a separate kind of promotions for the retail, go to the shop and buy, and separate promotions for the wholesalers, all mutually exclusive. So they're keeping all parties happy in the ecosystem. And I guess this is the only way they can um, you know, move forward in the market. And the good thing is that you have platforms today, you know, all the leading e-commerce platforms that support these kind of uh, models if you get your strategy right. Uh, Technology now is not an issue. I mean, it's more of getting your business model, your business strategies right. So all these uh, uh, things can be uh, managed. The second, obviously the most uh, important is the e-commerce platform considerations. If you go line by line, these are some of the major challenges um, B2C or even B2C customers are facing. Uh, when you go multinational, when your number of SKUs are more running into millions. Uh, I'm not going to read, but these are some of the major um, uh, technical challenges that they're having to address on their roadmaps. But again, um, these can easily be um, overcome with the you know, technology platforms that are available. Obviously, customization and configuration is a major uh, uh, major player, especially getting your uh, ERP, CRM integration right, a host of other things we need to um, you know, plan in a proper way, but technology exists today where all these can be accomplished. So finally, I mean, um, to summarize, uh, what we are seeing is that when we go and talk to the, you know, the large B2B customers, when they are planning their you know, B2B2C strategies, um, you know, one way is you have this kind of very complex, uh, you know, very nice, uh, you know, thousands of different activities uh, in one sheet. But most of these customers um, would not progress very far. They themselves say that um, the time is, um, you know, uh, the sheer dynamism in the industry does not allow for these kind of, uh, uh, what you call, these kind of, um, you know, uh, multiple activities. So instead, this is the whole um, you know, point of putting a slide is once they have their um, business model, the business, um, what you call the end-to-end -end metrics, what I mean by 
end-to-end -end metric here is, let's assume you are an equipment manufacturer, manufacturing a TV. You're, uh, say, rolling out about 3,000 TVs this month. You should have an idea of where each TV is going to go. Is it going to be bought by, uh, what, what we mean by not each TV, at least a percentage, what we mean metric is you should know that I'm rolling out 3,000 TVs this month. Probably 50% would be bought by online shoppers. Probably another 20% would be bought by my, through my distributor network. Another 20% through you know, uh, uh, marketplaces. So you should have a very clear idea on the overall metrics you know, as a company. Again, as I mentioned, the implementation aspects are very complex in this all, uh, you know, whether you use Magento or Salesforce or SAP, the implementation aspect always there. But then again, you know, you should have the metrics at each and every point. Um, I mean, each and every circle that you see here would have maybe 30, 40 metrics. But then once you have the metrics right, uh, again, when we talk to the CXOs of these large companies, they're most focused on these metrics. And um, I think and um, the whole industry sees that it's not just going about coming up with a very complex plan, but having the whole business model consolidated into a very clear and actionable uh, you know, metric-driven plan is the, uh, the best way to go. So with this, I uh, end my presentation. And uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, uh, I'll be more than willing to um, answer. Yeah. <laughs> No questions? <laughs> okay, if no questions, then uh, I'll leave it to uh, hand it over back to Lalit. Yeah.